It's August 15th, uh, 2023, a Tuesday, uh, almost exactly 13 months um, since I left Baltimore, Cork, heading uh, around the Atlantic, and now I'm in the Azores, about to depart on my way back to Cork to close the loop. So, final final passage of this uh, year of, of sailing. In this passage, my mum is actually also sailing on another boat, um, Angia, which is... Um, You've probably seen in a previous video by now and um yeah so they, they'll be out there at the same time now they're 12 foot longer than me and uh you know fully crewed so they will uh they'll obviously beat me to it by a few days but uh hopefully they'll be uh waving me in and i'll have a pint when i arrive with them saying goodbye to my mom as i depart tercera angra uh, to hirismo in tercera um heading for cork in Ireland and it is a lovely day and hopefully uh, once we get out here there'll be a little bit of wind there goes my mum <sighs> love her to bits as usual very emotional and nervous because the engine has been an issue so fingers crossed the thing works most important thing really is just to get away from the rocks and the harbour entrance and get the sails up and then if the engine goes it's not as big a deal but worst time for it to go will be right now Angra is disappearing into the background and uh, yeah I'm underway once again another passage this time final one of this uh, Atlantic circuit so yeah this is uh, my fellow boat for the uh, for the trip Angia they just took a swim there and they're just resting after it now so yeah, beautiful weather here. Um, it's going to be the biggest temp temperature differential, I think, between the start and end of a trip that I've had this year. Because um, when I was leaving Ireland, it was actually quite warm. Baltimore was hot, and I arrived in Spain, which was also hot. So this time, I don't think Ireland's going to be as warm to arrive back to. But you never know. Maybe we will take this temperature with us, and uh, yeah, maybe it won't be too bad. We'll see. Well, of course, 1,500, sorry, 1,055 miles, but It'll be a bit longer than that because I'm going to go north, pretty much due north once we get a bit of wind um, for a couple of days. So uh, I'll probably sail an extra few hundred miles just to, to try and get better wind uh, and not fall into some holes that are along the runway. It's morning after our first night at sea um, of the passage. And uh, yeah, we're motoring for the first 14 hours, so that's... I was kind of expecting, to be honest, the Azores uh, high has, has kind of been hovering over the Azores for the last while, keeping the, the wind to the to the north of them. So 14 hours, uh, about 60 miles or so, and then um, we've been uh, sailing since 3 o'clock this morning, and the wind is kind of perfect. It's beam reach, uh, about 15 to 20 knots, feeling okay, all things considered. Um, just usual first day jitters. Just took an absolutely massive wave into the uh, into the cabin, and everything here is drenched. And my life jacket was in the cockpit, stupidly, and then inflated, which is annoying. I do have a spare, but oh god! <laughs> At least my bedding didn't get very wet. It's a small relief. So we're coming up to two days out of the Azores at the moment. Um, so that's Tercera there that you can see just, just right there. We're just leaving Portuguese territorial waters, that purple circle here. And we're at almost exactly the latitude of the Portuguese-Spanish border. Um, so that's Galicia and this is the Atlantic coast of Portugal. Uh, Porto is just down south a bit there. It is grim out there. I want to go back to the Azores. This is a little taste of what lies ahead, although it's still warm. Shorts and t-shirt weather, but just torrential rain today. Not very nice at all. Good wind though. Averaging around six knots, which is pretty, pretty superb. Not gonna be able to record much of this, but a crash jive has snapped my goose neck. 
So I need to go and get the main down and it's howling windy. So that was my first real problem this year to be honest. Um, the goose wing broke so I, I can't use my main, I'm on head sail alone. I managed to get the main lashed up on deck um, and we're proceeding under head sail. It's not ideal, we have a long way to go but it could be worse, you know, it could have been on a longer passage. Um, and I could have lost the rig very easily the way that the, the boom was came to rest. It was putting a huge amount of pressure on the rig. Yeah, that was, uh, that was scary and worrying. And uh, the conditions are not nice at all. So head sail only. It's maybe if I... You know, if we hit a patch of cam, I might be able to uh, jury rig something with the main. I have to try and figure that out. Maybe text Paul, see if uh, see if he can do a bit of research and come up with any ideas. <sighs> God, what a what a shame! This was working out to be a lovely passage. There was just wind from every direction. It was boxing the compass, and we were all over the place. And I only had a preventer on one side, which is so stupid. And um, I'm raging with myself and it was just a snap jibe while I was down below um, I could almost feel it coming and uh, just didn't react quickly enough to it and yeah lost the boom but at least I didn't lose I almost lost the boom overboard and then I almost lost the halyard so I managed to retrieve the boom retrieve the sail I don't think the sail is even damaged I hope not and uh, and retrieve the halyard so small blessings little things lead to bigger things lead to bigger things and then you lose an important part of your uh, your sail plan but anyhow i got a i'm still high on adrenaline and i'm sure i'll go through the various phases of um, depression and guilt and self self-loathing um as i recover and as it occurs to me that this passage is going to take a bit longer than i had planned but uh it's still hammering rain so i'm going to go below now and have a cup of tea and uh try and and just reset my mind a bit and see where we see where we land so this is what we've ended up with for now uh, just a scrap of head sail pulled out I had to pull it out because it was really just without the main just rocking all over the place and the the forestay was just sort of banging and I was just worried I'd lose the whole rig if I didn't pull it out so um, everything is a mess up there but I'll have to wait until lighter wind to sort it out um, and frustratingly as soon as I've set the pole the wind looks like it's going around so we might have to jibe so no rest for the wicked oh well <laughs> at least there'll be uh, drama in this video anyway okay so I've done a bit of reflection um, a lot of people cross oceans using head sail alone right I've 800 and something miles to go but head sail alone is not a bad way of going downwind um, it's just going to be slow and light wind, but I have plenty of diesel, like loads and loads and loads. I have about four days worth of motoring. So to add insult to injury, the wind has now changed around to the north, um, which is the direction I wanted to be going, more or less. So my choices were to go, basically I can't, without the head or mainsail, I can't really go upwind very well. So my choice is to either limp out this way slowly, um, it's only forecast to be northerly for five or six hours and then it's going around to the northwest and then west. So I tried going this way because it would leave me in a slightly better position later, but it's just with the swell the way it is, it's just no way it's going to work. So I'm going to have to just limp east for five or six hours. So this is one of the little metal loops that uh, broke off the gooseneck. Um, if I can find the other one, I have a decent chance of making a good, good repair. Day three completed, uh, 99 miles, uh, mostly because there was a period of about four or five hours last night where I was just going one or two knots, sort of in the wrong direction. But since about maybe three or four this morning, uh, we've been able to pick ourselves up and carry on under an ever increasing head sail. So I haven't really been able to do too much about the repair of the gooseneck. Um, just because of the waves, to be honest, I haven't wanted to work on deck too much. It's probably the most interesting thing that's happened on my whole passage from like uh, 
uh, learning perspective. So on my whole year out, really, uh, this is the first thing that's gone dramatically wrong. Um, and even then, you know, I was thinking last night, you know, there's so many things that could have gone more wrong, like I could lose the rudder, lose the rig. Um, even losing the engine, to be honest, would be almost a bigger deal than, uh, than, than losing the main. I have perfectly good head sail there. Uh, all it means is that my passage would be a day slower. So yeah, that's that's where I am. That's that's where I am headspace wise. I actually think I'm holding up fairly well. Did get fairly good sleep last night, relatively speaking, for early in the trip anyway. And uh, yeah, this wind is definitely coming around, and uh, it can only be good. So I'm having a really down afternoon where I just. I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm 750 miles from Ireland and another two and a half miles, so I guess I should celebrate these these things um, because I feel like uh, I just need to pick me up. Um, I'm 600 miles from Galicia, so it's 150 miles closer, which is you know a day and a half at the current kind of speeds I'm doing closer, but then. I'd have to sail across Biscay and closing in on Finisterre, there's no guarantee of good weather there, you know, obviously there's no guarantee of good weather off Ireland either, but I just, I don't know what to do. It's frustrating. I don't think I'm going to turn back to the Azores. It's 360 miles and I'm likely to hit light winds on the way there once I get into the vicinity of them. My gut feeling is to carry on to Ireland and see what happens. Yeah, I'm just cooking some food and maybe that'll make a difference. So. It's probably my lowest point of the year, to be honest, although when there's so many cams in the Atlantic that was pretty low, but this is this is pretty bad. But anyway, probably not gonna put any of this up because it's just whiny, but the realities of sailing. <laughs> can be a bit, uh, a bit heartbreaking sometimes. So this is my other frustration is I think this um, epoxy putty is, is kind of gone old and bad. Now I just pulled some off the end so maybe if I get into the packet a little bit I might get a better bit but I was trying to stick this lug back on and it's just not working. I can't get the thing off the mast which is very frustrating but yeah so that's where I am with the repair. Pretty much nowhere. So this morning I got up uh, and for the first time really since the gooseneck broke it was uh, calm enough to attempt a repair so Reese had mentioned lashing last night and obviously that was one of the things in my mind um, but he, he prompted me to think about it again further um, I did try JB weld uh, or the epoxy putty that I have but I think it's been open too long so um, I just thought a lash is possibly a better solution um, so the mainsail is back up at the moment um, and I'll, I'll go forward now and, and show you what I've done uh, to affect that. So it's a real get me home repair. I don't even know if it'll withstand a jibe but I think we're just due to be a lot of upwind sailing over the next while and a lot of light wind sailing as well so hopefully it will get me there. I've, I've basically lashed it as you would expect and then I've used this spanner as a kind of a Spanish windlass. It just needed a turn because it was already pretty tight. Um, so just put the spanner in, put a twist and just left the spanner resting on this thing. It's not a huge amount of tension in that spanner, but as it loosens, yeah, I could possibly put in another turn or two. I'll do that now. It's another twist to the spanner and it's, it's pretty tight there now. I mean, again, you can probably see where the bit is gone. So the pin is just sitting there held in by the tension of the uh, of the uh, lashing and the spanner. So anyhow, uh, it's put us at the moment from three and a half knots up to four and a half. So that's nice because I think we're dealing with this kind of wind for the weekend. So um, the I would have been happy enough to continue under head sail alone if it was mostly downwind in the future. But basically the forecast is um, as I get north towards Ireland, there'll be increasing amounts of north in the wind. So from Tuesday to Thursday, We'll have northwesterlies. I'm hopeful I'll be far enough west and north at that stage that I'll be able to take it as a close reach. Um, but as I approach Ireland on Friday, Saturday, 
the wind is forecast, and it's a long way off, it's only Saturday today, so that's a week away. The wind is forecast to, to swing around to the north, so unless I'm very far north, which I probably could be if I start averaging five knots, but more likely I'll be to the southwest of Ireland at that stage, and I just have to hope I'm north enough that I'll be able to, to beat up the last bit of the way, but I wouldn't be able to do that without a head sail because I can barely manage, like, you know, um, 90 degrees to the wind really is about as good as I can go with head sail along. Because with the main I'll get, you know, 45, a typical 50, typical kind of beating angle. So yeah, fingers crossed it works. Um, it's just a very temporary fix, but hopefully it gets me home. Which is about a week away, so <laughs> temporary but has to last a week, so we shall see.